<laughs> we cut to them waking up the next morning with her like cuddled in his lap. Because you know John Schneider was like, maybe we wake up naked in the bed. And she was like, do you remember what that guy said when you wanted to use his son in the scene? You oh, shoot me in the eyeball until your yeah. finger falls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about sitting in an easy chair together? And she's like, mm, not okay. reclined though. Not yeah. reclined. <laughs> they wake up and it was like, did we fall asleep in plank position together? So yes. That's, right. It's insane. <laughs> it's like so Cirque du Soleil what? position, <laughs> like hanging back. <laughs> Nonsense. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because every so often they're made of pure fucking gold. <laughs> Monoatomic <laughs> gold. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright, who you've already heard. Heath, welcome back. <laughs> this is such a good movie. It really was. I'm so happy. <laughs> we, we own this. We were just talking about this before we turned on the record. We own this movie and... I will be watching it again and again and again. It's that good. At least annually. I saved it to my phone's camera roll. That's how much <laughs> I care about it, is I saved it to my... I screen recorded it with my phone while I slept, lest it be lost to time like the Library of Alexandria. <laughs> Yeah, no, this one's going on the Pantheon for absolute certain. Of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast, and you've already heard him as well, is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? The band is back together, baby. Yeah, it's been a minute. Ooh! So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched To Die For, and I'm going to let the writer slash director slash star slash also country music star, John Schneider, tell you what his art is all about. Oh, good. Ooh. Quote, meet Gunnery Sergeant Quint North. Come on. The character's name is Quint North. A creature of habit and discipline, the current PC world and patriots are the enemy of progress mentality makes no sense to him at all. The propensity of athletes taking a knee and disrespecting not only this great country, but also those who gave their lives protecting it makes even less. But what can one man do to fight the intentional decay of the greatest country the world has ever known? <gasps> Speak out. Live a patriotic example. And, if necessary, die for his flag. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because she is worth it. Wait, there's more. Warning. <laughs> this movie is intensely patriotic. Intensely. It's, it's, this is... <laughs> I mean, it is. Triple X level of patriotic. No, it so is. It is, careful. though. It is. It, it is. Parental, it lives up to that. Patriotic <laughs> guidance <laughs> suggests It's graphically patriotic. Be careful with this level of patriotism. Mm -hmm. This movie is intensely patriotic. If patriotism and love of country offend you in any way, watch this film, then move somewhere else. And Twint, nant, 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 nant. by John Schneider. The tagline is go back where you came from. My fucking God. <laughs> Literally, yes. Yes. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love reading the text that got Tucker Carlson fired. <laughs> I do. But you wish they contained the artistry and oeuvre of a Film school freshman's first attempt at John Wick made in a retirement home? <laughs> you will love this movie. Oh, talk about welcoming a guy back from vacation, wow. right? This is how a white man fights is making this movie. <laughs> like, that's so accurate. This is how a white man fights, though. It yep. is. Yep. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst promotional photo. Yes! Uh, I've pasted it into notes. This is a still from the movie that John Schneider chose on purpose to represent the movie promotionally. And it's a, it's a picture of him. And he is very clearly, well, it's him, but you don't know that. This is, if, you're, if you didn't know this was John Schneider, you look at this, you're like, 
okay, the man outside the bus station is fucking an American flag and I have to yep. walk around him now. Mm -hmm. Gary Busey's grandmother has really lost it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. That's what I would think. And, and has lost it with a giant American flag penis. If you went through this movie trying to find the least flattering still, you could not have done better. <laughs> he did it for you. I am 100% certain his real penis is inside this flag for this picture. <laughs> no question. There's no chance that's not true. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was going to go with best worst workout, right? So, so easy, obvious. Yeah, right, right. So twice <laughs> in this movie, we will watch this character work out. And I'm not going to ruin it yet, but the jingoism with which he works, like you could not possibly imagine enough jingoism in his workout. It will exceed your expectations no matter how high you set those expectations. <laughs> it's too broad to be... A joke. Yes. If we wrote it as a sketch, we'd be like, eh, let's take it back a little bit. Right. I think this is just <laughs> too wide. We're overdoing it at this point. Yeah. It's only so, so exaggerated that it can get. <laughs> okay. And then, God, there's so much. But I'm going to go with best worst understanding. And let me explain what I mean. Okay. So as Heath just read in that truly incredible paragraph that fucking John Schneider wrote for this movie, <laughs> when he says die for the flag... Now, most people know that's a metaphor, which means die for your country. Yes. He does not understand no, that. He, he means, means his sexual partner, the physical piece the of physical cloth. physical <laughs> yes. piece of cloth. That he loves. The flag. Around his penis called the flag. What's so funny is the flag coat, which I assume John Schneider has tattooed to his taint, has a <laughs> section for idiots like John Schneider where they're like, hey, by the way, this is just a piece of cloth. Do not die for this piece yes. of cloth, John <laughs> right. Schneider. <laughs> right. You do whatever you have to do. It's just a piece of cloth. And John Schneider was like, I get it. It's a test. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that it has my literal name on it. That's pretty cool. They But no, okay, I'll, I'm mm. going to do it. This movie is like if Heath died trying to save the life of the wool dasher mizzle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, we're at least as eager to get to the breakdown as you are, listeners. So we're going to keep the break brief and we'll be back shortly with all the fanatical patriotism of To Die For. Hey, typical wine store, how may I ignore you? Yeah, uh, is there a reason why so much of the store is all dusty? Yes, sir, our wines are very fine. Okay, and dusting ruins the wine? Yes, let's go with that. Can I help you? Right, yeah, sorry. So... I've got a bunch of parties this summer and I want to bring a bottle of wine, but I'm tired of buying expensive wine that I don't even like. I see. So you want First Leaf Wine Club. Oh, what's First Leaf Wine Club? First Leaf makes it super easy to get personalized wine boxes delivered on your schedule. And since you get to choose the day your shipment comes, you can go out and have all the summer fun without stressing about missing a delivery. Wait, boxed wine? I thought that stuff was bad. Not boxed wines, they're boxes of wine. All you have to do is answer some quick questions about your likes and dislikes on their website, and their expert team will select a customized assortment of world-class wines based on your preferences. Wow, but isn't that pricey? Actually, everything on First Leaf is priced lower than what you'd pay in a wine store. Plus, every selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guarantee. I do like the sound of that. To make sure that you've got great wine when you want it this summer, you've got to try First Leaf. Just head over to tryfirstleaf.com slash awful to sign up and you'll get your first six hand curated bottles for just $44.95. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash awful. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash awful to get your first six bottles for under $8 a bottle. Tryfirstleaf.com slash awful. All right. Thanks. Would you like to add a jello shot to your purchase today? Um, no. Yeah, you're a loss. Is it? No. No. Right. <laughs> Sir. Yes, Johnson, what is it? Uh, so, uh, well, okay, you know how that new spy program we're working on uses metadata to capture terrorists? Sure, sure. Well, so someone must have sat on a switch or something because over the weekend, instead of collecting terrorism words, it collected only the words people spoke through gritted teeth in the bathroom after losing a fight to their niece. Huh. Uh, that doesn't sound very helpful. No, 
It's not. Anyway, so Wickham has been using chat GPT to work on his new spy thriller, and he actually fed that data into chat GPT. So it spat out this. Oh, all right. Let me see that. Uh, to Die For by John Schneider? Yeah. Yeah. No, John Schneider didn't write it, but we did. We called the Piggly Wiggly near his house, and they said he's free. So like, we could make it into a movie. I don't know. This... Feels like making this movie is a pretty immoral way for us to, you know, make money. But didn't we once sell heroin for the Taliban? Eh, still, though. No, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on a series of logos accompanied by what I can only describe as the noise that truck nuts would make if they made it. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, <laughs> can logos have gay fear? Because if they can... <laughs> <laughs> These logos have gay fear. And they made a, a noise like they were scared of, yeah, possibly the concept of gay people. Mm -hmm. And it was just mm -hmm. like, clearly John Schneider just naming things for his logo as fast as he could. And they were like, yeah, we can draw that. He was just like, cowboy Superman, diamond plating from a pickup truck, squint and a nail also, like a Ted Nugent guitar. And they were like, yeah, we all we got it. Mm -hmm. It's all there. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. No, That's when we logo. when you walked in the door, we knew what you would want our lo your logo <laughs> yeah. to look at. And we started sketching it. Yeah. You're going to keep fucking that flag for the whole meeting? Yeah, I am. <laughs> so the, the song kicks in, right? And this is a song that it's just like, I live in a shitty little town and pretend it doesn't suck the song, right? <laughs> I was so hoping someone would Google this song because I refuse to touch my algorithm with this song, but it's like the, that's why we stand for the rare. It's try that in a small town before it was cool. Yeah, right, yeah. right, yeah. Uh -huh. I wrote in my notes, music note, gagging on America's cock wasn't quite enough for the beginning of this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, and this fucking jingoism song is accompanied by John Schneider reverently putting out his flag in the morning. 90 seconds. Who had 90 seconds for the first American flag? <laughs> I think, like, that might not be the winner of all our God no, movies, the but under. it's close. I had the under on yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, the under is a reasonable bet on that. So he puts up his, his flag and then he salutes it reverently while holding back a cheer. Now, we think at this point that this is the flag outside of his home or his place of business. But no, this is on his <laughs> fucking car. His car. It's not even a truck. Nope. It's fucking it's an it's El, Camino. El Camino. Yes. Yeah. He's driving the fucking mullet of cars. Literally <laughs> the thing that's called the mullet <laughs> of car trucks yes. or whatever you want to call that yes. thing. And he's got a... 25 foot flagpole projecting off the back of the bed of this El Camino. And yeah, he's strapping up his American flag with zip ties that he owns from January 6th. Right. The ones certain. he didn't use to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer. Yet. Right. The ones he tried. He was really hoping to use those on Nancy Pelosi, but yeah. now he's using them on his flag. Violation of flag code, by the way, in case anyone's oh, interested. Oh, interesting. I'm not okay. He right. constantly violates flag code in this movie. I'm just saying, like, if no, I no, made no, a movie... If it's a guy who <laughs> dies for flag code at the end of the movie, that matters. How specific is the flag code? Like, It's can, so specific. Very specific. Specific, yeah. Does it like exhaustively list the rules against? Because I, I mm -hmm. feel like I'm going to get creative mm -hmm. if it doesn't. Ooh, Heath, this is your calling. Yeah, yeah all right? those board games were. I will hack the for... shit out of the flag code <laughs> and just like flag code. perform this in front of John Schneider's house every day. I get a free day. Also, this is such a stupid small moment, but I have to point it out just so you understand what we're dealing with here, right? So he gets a phone call. He answers with his name, rank, and fucking serial number or whatever from when he was in the military. <laughs> and then he's like, I told y'all I don't want to buy cable TV. And he hangs up. So this movie is so <laughs> antiquated, it doesn't even know what technology one would resist at this point in history, mm -hmm. right? The guy might as well be trying to sell him a fucking set of encyclopedias. <laughs> yeah, the target audience for this movie is people who yell at telemarketers because they think the people calling are aware whether or not you've spoken to a different telemarketer. Yes. Yeah. Well, right. And then he yells at the kid who delivers his fucking newspaper. I'm like, we're three minutes into this movie and he's yelled at two service workers trying to do their fucking jobs. I want this guy to get dragged into industrial machinery by a fucking chain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, he doesn't want to buy cable TV, but he's paying for a landline phone. And he has a cell. <laughs> like, by itself. Yeah. We're going to find out in a second. He also has a cell phone. Yes. He's paying, like... 
two hundred dollars a month just for a landline right. exploit. They're begging him to take the cheaper package. If he got <laughs> cable, it would be like thirty dollars for the right, two yeah. bundled. Right, right. So and, and then he gets his newspaper, and we see the fucking headline, the front page headline. NFL applauds high school QB for taking a knee at Friday's game. That's, I guess, the inciting incident or whatever. Uh, I guess. It's tough to say with this one. Yeah. <laughs> Early onset dementia and not enough mental health care for boomers, I guess. Well, that's the insight. <laughs> really, really, yeah. Oh, we should point out, too, that he has a dog. His dog's name is Glory, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Like the Guys. flag, the flag's name is Old mm -hmm, Glory. Mm -hmm. Is that what yep, they're going yep, for? Then? Exactly. Great. I will admit, I may have just been reaching, but do you feel like Glory is doing a bit in this movie? Like, I feel whenever she's on the screen, she's like, this fucking oh, idiot. Glory right? the dog, like, oh, yes. dog is, is somehow geniusly roasting this movie throughout this movie every time we get a shot of the dog. <laughs> okay, the I'm, glad, I'm glad it wasn't just me because I really felt her performance in this, you know, and I, yeah. I, just, I, didn't, want, I didn't want it to be my own thing. No, the dog, the dog I feel was like, definitely I feel the like the dog was like inventing good, useful new slur words for white people constantly. Yeah. Like, oh, that's, yeah, that was what was in this dog's heart for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so he drives away. This is where we first realized that that goddamn flagpole was on the back of his car, right? So we all had that moment. <laughs> all of us went mad in our notes like we saw the Cthulhu. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then we get, apparently this is his daily routine. He puts up his big flag and then he drives through the, the turnaround at the high school, at the local high school, blaring patriotic music through speakers that are mounted on the outside of his car. Yes. Literally the national anthem in this moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speakers facing out from the bed of your El Camino and a 25 foot pole holding an American flag. Like, I know you're not supposed to ever, you know, just murder people, but like, is this not, <laughs> <laughs> like, is this not a self defense scenario now? If somebody was driving that rig, I am scared for my life. I should be allowed to murder you, I feel like. I know that's not true, but I feel like you should. Right? You kill that guy, your only defense you need is, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that. And they're right. like, yeah. yep, no, not good. They can't convict you. They can't. Look, this, he's right there. He's, he's fucking a flag. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so then we head over to a cemetery to visit his tragic backstory. This is the first time in the movie that I realized a insane number of scenes were going to be green screened. Yeah. Right. Like, like scenes where it's like so much, there's no reason for it. Cause we see him in this graveyard and then we see him green screened into yeah. this graveyard. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's because I have a theory. I think it's that reality was unwilling to sign the release for this film. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he had to green screen himself onto his own porch at one point to yes. fix mm -hmm. something. It's the best. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. And that's the only place he was allowed to shoot. He went all over the place trying to get shots and he got kicked out of every restaurant. So they have to green screen just the background of a restaurant at one point. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Oh, you know, that's honestly probably correct on a lot of this. A lot of places probably let him use their facility and they're like, oh, we didn't know what you were filming here. No, you can't oh, film an anti-vaccine movie. No. Yeah, right, right. And then he just took the still shots that he still had. That's amazing. That's probably what happened. So he talks to this grave. This is his dead wife and is very tragic and apparently he's got a dead kid too or whatever. He doesn't just talk to the dead wife's grave. He, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he engages in a very aggressive, long, wet Kiss, open mouth, wet kiss. It was almost yeah. cuddling us. Yes. The gravestone. Yeah. Where's Ed Norton when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Kurt, American history. There X? it is, yes, baby. Yeah, there it, it took is. me a second. So, it's, uh, so the, the phone call, though, is the doctor saying, hey, man, the next scene is you at the doctor's office. He's like, will this ever come back? And he's like, only in the dumbest way possible. He's like, oh, I, well, I better run over there. So he goes over to the world's echoiest doctor's office, right? Now, this will start a trend in this movie where <laughs> each new scene will be shot and, and recorded with an even worse microphone than the last one. Mm -hmm. As though they're trying to drive me insane slowly. Yeah. yeah. And every building is more and more made of like corrugated 
tin somehow. Yes. And it's yes. so crazy, <laughs> the noises we get. The last scene, the mic is on the lady who threw King Arthur the sword, and he's inside a tinfoil ball. Right. So it really, yeah. mm -hmm. we're working up to that. And I should point out, this is also the tradition of the movie, which is it. this movie has no direction. It has basically no plot. The scenes will just be led by... John Schneider going, you know who else I'd like to give a piece of my mind? Yes. And now it's doctors. Doctors are the... Right, because the doctor's like, well, so, you know, how's your health? He's like, well, I drink a lot of beer and I smoke a lot of cigarettes and I don't give a damn. And he's like, well, what? why are you even here then? Yeah. You don't have to be. Like, you're not required by law to be here. Yeah, he even refuses to get the medical results from the doctor that apparently the doctor did. Yeah. So he just like... Went there as a prank to be like, nah, go fuck yourself. I made you do a thing. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'm smoking right now. Yeah. He's like, I don't got no need for no medical results, but will behave throughout the rest of the movie as though he was diagnosed with stage 37 cancer. Yes. Right. Which he wasn't. I just spoiler alert right there. Spo oh. Okay. Well, if we're going to spoil it, can we talk about it? Because it's fucking insane. Because he spends the rest of the movie being like, I don't know how much time I've got left on this earth. And then towards the end of the movie, they're just going to be like, you're actually totally fine. And he's he's like, perfectly healthy. There is no cancer. Oh, that it's, yeah. That's why no, I but I don't know how much time I have left on this <laughs> earth. That's the legitimate thing, this correct thing. That I'm I allowed to act like this until you give me a clean beer. <laughs> you all are being weird for interpreting that, even yeah. though I said it very <laughs> ominously every time. <laughs> So, oh, and we should also point out that for the first like third of this movie, every person that he meets that he co comes across, he'll ask him at the end, hey, you're going to vote, aren't you? You know, and, and they'll either say yes or like this doctor, he'll say like, well, you know, th there's just no point, you know. What, what, what yeah. would even be the purpose? Right. And then he says, that's what they want you to think. And first of all, he means Jews. Second of all, <laughs> he does. if you ever consider not voting for Joseph Elizabeth Biden, know that John Schneider will be voting for whoever Joe Biden runs against. Yep. Don't mm -hmm. vote for Joe Biden. Vote against John Schneider. <laughs> this is all we ask you on this program. Also, if by some insane chance a Republican is listening right now, you should not even bother voting. They're like that. Yeah, it's no, not you're not. not. He's we're right about you. We're going to the shit out of you no oh, matter what you vote. obviously, we're going to steal your votes. <laughs> your vote like the, does not count. The way we're gonna, absolutely we're gonna cheat no. that we do. So just don't bother. You should vote for our side to double bluff us. Then we'll accidentally count it. Oh, yeah. there you go. Check out Jill Stein. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to a diner where he's having his morning breakfast with a couple of cops. There's a point here where the waitress shows up at the table and she's like, y'all vaccinated, right? I'm kidding. We murder people with our stupid. We have fun here. We don't Horrible. do vaccinating. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The mortality rate of the South rose by about 150% over the last three years. Let me top up that coffee for you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm statistically dead. This is like a Schrodinger's cat type of thing in this diner right now. <laughs> and then the young, attractive female cop asked him to tell some war stories. I'm like, God, this couldn't be more old conservative guy porn if we were just slowly <laughs> rolling extension cords correctly or something, oh, right? God, she just holds a flashlight exactly how he wants it. Yeah. <laughs> Also, we should point out that almost all of these shots are, are green screened and none of the actors are actually in the same room as it's being filmed. No, this this process ended with everyone having restraining orders against everyone else <laughs> no. as well. They should. The whole scene was insane. The editing, it felt like a ransom note of editing. Yes, like right. stock footage, <laughs> diner shots of like different sizes, coffee further away. Pouring coffee and just like little clips of that and then just one shots for tiny bits of talking. It's so bad. Different microphones, different cameras, different backdrops, different qualities of green screen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every character is speaking through a different city's subway PA somehow <laughs> in a yeah. worse way each time. <laughs> The miking is so bad in this scene. It's terrible throughout the movie, but it's like yeah. crazy in this scene. And of course, we have to talk about this because there's going to be like 17 scenes about it. She orders a vanilla latte. The lady, the young cop, because they don't even know how coffee works kids these days. <laughs> yep. Latte with milk in it. Ugh. 
So then, <laughs> why is the diner offering that if they want to shit on it? Though I don't understand. <laughs> like, why? Why is their country diner serving that bullshit? That's their fault. Well, actually, if you'll remember, they're not because she's like, I had a vanilla latte, and she's like, you don't want my spit coffee? This, yeah. I'll have you know that the coffee that's been at the bottom of this pot <laughs> has been at the bottom of this pot Since for fourteen seventy nine. Yeah. So, but just then. <laughs> His dog out in the car starts barking to warn him that the flag on the back of his car has been disrespected, right? So he runs out to take care of it. Here's what we see. He runs out. His flag is on the ground, right? His flagpole is broken. His flag's on the ground. And he says, and I quote, I'm going to kill that damn Indian. Indian. Yes. Okay. So best case scenario here. He is now planning to murder a person from India. Best right. case. Right. Best case. And that's not it. <laughs> Good news. Not best case. That's not what's happening. I literally, I wondered, like, because, well, first of all, I will be getting a refund for this film. And one of the ways you can get a refund is hate speech. And I was like, I'll just do Native American hate speech, right? That's a fucking slam dunk guru. Right. Yeah. Throughout. So, yeah. So he drives off and then there's this just incredibly lazy and pointless moment where one cop turns to the other and says, hmm, he sure has a medal of honor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Hell of a protagonist. Am I right? Am I right? Cut. So, so he's driving around muttering about killing Indians when he notices he's almost out of gas. So we have this very important stopping for gas scene at the old timey gas station. I'm going to hate everybody. Ran out of gas during my hate crime. Thanks, Biden. And like, <laughs> yes. literally, thanks, Biden. Yes. Literally, that yes. happened. Literally, that happened. Let's happens. go, Brandon, in this fucking yes. scene. <laughs> like, I wrote so, that as a joke. Two seconds later, let's go. <laughs> I was like, yes. oh my God. <laughs> he tries to order a black coffee at the fucking gas station for some reason. And he's like, I thought black coffee mattered. <laughs> like, oh. the, it's, it is as though f fate were going to deliver a behooded John Schneider in the other room of my house and present me with a gun with a single bullet just by watching this movie. I was going through <laughs> some kind of fucking John Bourne test. Jason Bourne. So, yeah, when he did the Let's Go Brandon line, I wrote my notes. It's like this is just revenge for against us for making fun of right. what would Jesus do, right? Like, he, <laughs> you've heard that episode. He's like, you know who'd watch it? Yeah, but in this scene, he tries a lot. He's like, I want to try a latte and see what that's all about. And they give him a latte and it's gross and he doesn't like it. They give it to him in a fucking ceramic mug. mug. The gas station does. <laughs> With honey in it. Which was kind of insane. Oh, God, he orders his coffee. This guy will spend a non-zero percent of this movie shitting on anyone's coffee order. And the way he takes his coffee is with honey. What the fuck is that? With honey. Yeah. So then he, so he, he gets his latte, doesn't like it, gets his gas, bitches about Joe Biden. And then he goes to kill that Indian, presumably, who is a Hispanic guy that lives across the street from him. Apparently. Yeah. Okay, but just quick second before he gets there, he makes sure to do a quick little banter about how his penis is definitely quite large, according to oh, all the right. characters yes. in the movie he wrote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. The size of his penis will come up in a positive way numerous times. Four times. This film. Four oh, different okay. characters right. I can will think stop of three, to go. So. I thought it was more. You than have four. a massive cock. Oh, right, because of the gun one. Yep, yep, yep. yep Big the gun Mac one. also mm -hmm. messes at the size of his penis. Okay, four. Yep, you're right. So, okay. So he shows up to his neighbor's house. Eventually, this character will be named Wes. We'll be eight minutes from the end of this movie. He'll get a name. His name is Wes, but he is a, a Native American, at least in the in the film. Right. So his name is Wes Beaverton. Yes. That's what yeah. John Schneider thought of. Yep. Let me ask you a question. Is it a good thing that they didn't make a Native American be in this movie? Or is it a bad thing that they had a Hispanic person play a Native American so they could say racist shit to him without him as a reflex choking John Schneider to death? <laughs> uh, this, is, it, this is my... Conundrum. It's bad what they did and didn't do somehow yes. both. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so now what we're supposed to believe in the movie is that this is the guy that knocked down his flag because this guy hates the American flag so much. We didn't see him do that, right? So what we see is that his flag got knocked over. John Schneider blamed this guy for it and then went and did donuts in his yard about it. Right. right? Seriously. 
He just drives up onto this guy's lawn. And as we're approaching this guy's lawn, this guy who is Native American, of course, there's like <laughs> what John Schneider thinks is Native American music playing out of nowhere. Yeah. No, it might as well be that racist thing that Atlanta Braves fans do. Yeah. Yeah. Tiger Lily might as well step out of the house <laughs> and be like, little much, John, little yeah. much. Okay. But it's massage room porn that he thinks is Native American music somehow, which is very interesting. One of several sexual lessons we learn about John Schneider in this movie. Interesting. All right. right. So he gets home and there's a knock on the door. It's just as spatially confusing from our perspective, listeners. <laughs> and it's the cops. They're there to see him about the donuts that he turned in his neighbor's yard. So they have a, like a one second response time, which is good. Yep. You know, right? That's nice. Or they just hang out in front of Quint's house because he will constantly commit crimes throughout this movie. <laughs> You're right, yep. right. But the cops tell him that if he agrees to fix the liberal neighbor's yard, he won't press charges. So, like, we all had this moment where we were like, wait, is the plot that he was sentenced to be a butler? Is that really yep. where we're going? Right. <laughs> Almost. Landscaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And so Wes is like, yeah, he can be my landscaper and I won't press charges. <laughs> and then John Schne Quint is his name. Quint yes. North. Mm -hmm. Fucking... What is that? It's like John Quincy Adams and Oliver North. What is he going for? I, Quint I, from Jaws? Who the fuck knows? Yeah. I refuse to spend any time inside John Schneider's mind. Okay. Whatever. John Schneider is like, uh, I'll grow you some fucking corn maize, stupid just in, staple crop. In front of the cops? Nobody eats corn anymore. He's just calling him slurs in front of the cops, and the cops are like, mm-hmm, yep, good yep. conversation. Yeah, a little back and forth here, a little banter. One of the cops being a person of color, a mm -hmm. black man. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I was just dying for, like, the next neighbor feud to be with a black guy and watch this cop deal with John <laughs> Schneider <laughs> hurling his new round of slurs. Oh, no, we don't get any of that. Yeah. He has to, he has to live through the movie. Now, and, and we should point out, as dumb as this... You know, well, now you have to be this guy's landscaper thing. Is He says, no. John Schneider's like, no, I'm not going to fix his lawn. He's like, oh, well, I guess this will never come up again in the movie in any fucking way. Yeah, because every time John Schneider says no to the law, because John Schneider wrote this movie, the cops just go, well, his name is written in lowercase on his driver's license. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Nuggie, get out of here. Hate crime. <laughs> so that night, we're going to get my best worst. We cut into him jumping rope. We're all rooting for a coronary, but no, this is going to be his workout montage. Now, while he's working out, we will hear him whisper Telly Savala sing the national anthem in his ASMR voice. This is yep. a very sexual whispering. This is another sexual lesson we get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He knows a lot off the top of his head, sexy poetry wise related to... <laughs> patriotism of some sort, especially America the flag. He's got a lot of America poems yeah. in the in the old right. dome riding around in there. And okay, did you not get like a jingoist Cape Fear vibe from this whole thing? Oh, he's yeah. obviously. He's yeah. doing the pull-ups. He's, he's De Niro, but it, instead of like love and hate, it's like Brandon and MAGA or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so much less likable than Robert De Niro and Cape oh, Fear. Oh, yeah. I'd yeah. like to apologize to whatever that character's name is. <laughs> also, I just, I have to point this out because it's so silly. At one point, he's doing pull-ups and we're like doing this super close-up on the tiny little boo-boo he got on his knuckle so that he can say, yeah, I bleed for my workouts. I bleed <laughs> for my so country sad. and for my flag. Do you mean the literal piece of cloth? I, I do mean, mean the, literal, the literal piece of he's cloth. trying to punch this heavy bag with his little wimpy little old man arms. It's he gets so tired so fast, it's the yes. best. He's like, one, <laughs> two, three. Oh God, I threw up and shat myself and died. <laughs> we watch him hug the bag. He we watch him be like, ah, I need the ref will come in and break us up. Break, break, break. Yeah. <laughs> Did you break yourself from the bag there? He tries to do push-ups for a second and he had to call in a stunt push-up yep. guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. He wanted to have some. And then they show like just his face doing half a push-up. Yeah. <laughs> in a different cut. It was pretty good. Oh, and the whole time he's like, my country, tis of thee. Sweet land <laughs> of liberty. He's not exaggerating. This no, is exactly what happens. happens. Exactly what's happening. It's amazing. So, and then in case you didn't hate him enough, he starts giving his dog booze. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, fuck this guy. Also, he's drinking tequila from Mexico because he <gasps> hates America. Yeah. He hates Clear freedom. Roll. He's a bad oh. American. If he loved America, he might try some sparkle donkey yeah, tequila. Yeah, right? God no, damn it. Sparkle donkey tequila. Pretty sure. How many from. Jews died in 9 11? <laughs> <laughs> That one's for free, Sparkle Donkey. That one's for free. You're welcome. There you go. So then we get we we cut to his fucking Vietnam flashback. And this is amazing, right? Because this is obviously shot in his backyard. And they're like, he's like, no, there's a sepia filter. It'll look just like Vietnam. It'll look just like Saving Private Ryan. Don't worry, guys. John Schneider was five years old when we entered yes. Vietnam. What yeah. the fuck mm -hmm. is he doing? You're a Gulf War veteran. Just do Gulf War. What do you do? Sure. I don't understand. He didn't have a beach close enough to him that he could do a <laughs> Gulf War thing. Also... <laughs> Hey, you know what's awesome? When you buy a gun sound effects, but you're an idiot, so you bought laser. Oh my so it's God. Like, so good. Pew, pew, pew. I wrote my mojo like, did the Viet Cong have laser guns? <laughs> yeah. I knew there was a reason they won. They're out in the jungle. And then like, if you had panned over, there was like kids playing laser tag in the jungle of Vietnam in 1968 or whatever. It's so dumb. It's so obviously just fucking video game noises. Right, because they have like you hear a guy screaming in the background, but then you hear the same guy giving the same scream like eight seconds later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we see the flashback to him having to kill his buddy and knob right before he gets captured. Yeah, and John Schneider's like, "It's all right." <laughs> he screams like a like a washerwoman <laughs> seeing a mouse while he shoots him in the head. I feel like. I feel like you'd be like, okay, you kind of ruined it with your weird. Yeah, no, actually, I don't want to be shot anymore by you, not by you. Can someone calmer shoot me, please? <laughs> you missed by a lot. Uh, excuse me, Mr. VC, uh, yeah, right, Charlie, right, I don't yeah. know what to say. Can you yeah. kill him and capture me, please? And also, by the way, the gun he's using would have looked anachronistic in any hand younger than Doc fucking Holidays. Mm -hmm. But but now they have to end the scene before he fires the gun at his buddy because they didn't have firing gun budget, apparently. No, no, they did not. So it, he's woken up from his from his flashback by a knock on his door. It's his young, beautiful daughter. So he's going to have breakfast with her. Now, this actor that plays the daughter, she will deliver every single line that she delivers in this movie as though she thought the sentence was over, but then she turned the page and there was more of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. When you said, like, she thought the sentence, I assumed, like, she was sentenced to be in this movie, <laughs> right? Like, she robbed the L, and they were like, you know what? To teach you the value of a boomer, you have to make a movie for one. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, look up her IMDb page. It's the saddest fucking thing you'll oh ever read. Oh my god, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Anyways, she's there because she's the town's lawyer. Yes, she. Yes, uh, she is a lawyer that works for the city. Well, she's there to warn him that the school wants to take out a restraining order against him so that he'll stop, you know, driving through their parking lot during school hours, blaring music loudly with speakers mounted on the outside of his car. And he, and I cannot emphasize this enough, literally has no understanding of why someone would not want him to do that. Right. Not only does he not, but the whole movie is predicated on the idea that there is no logical reason why someone would want him to not do that. And it's predicated on the idea that a public school in Louisiana right. was going to try to persecute the white guy with the American flag. American flag on his Camino. order against him for having a flag in the school. Full zone. Well, and also let's not like, uh, come on, man. Like, because because the, the daughter's like, well, you know, a lot of people find that flag offensive. I'm like, it's the American flag, motherfucker. Why don't you just have the guts to admit which flag on your car people are offended by? Guy from Dukes of fucking Hazard. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I, I literally I wrote just be honest and do this movie about the Confederate flag. Like, yes. why are you? Mm -hmm. do, that's what. Right. That's what this is about. Yeah. Just do it. This movie would make sense if it was about the Confederate flag, but he couldn't not write a line where someone was like. Well, that was because of slavery. And his character was like, scoop, beep, beep, but that point. Yeah, right. But I'm racist, so I don't care. Yeah. Here's one of the things he says about that flag. Here's what he says. He mm -hmm. says mm -hmm. that flag, he's talking about the American fucking flag, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. about everyone who has ever been or ever will be. Yep. Demonstrably untrue. Nope. It is the flag of America. Very limited in scope. <laughs> <laughs> so. Also, I have to point this out. At one point in this scene, a fly flies into the actress's eye playing his daughter and they just 
keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Why would you possibly cut anything from this movie? <laughs> That would take the ability to say that wasn't as good as the rest of this. No, movie. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> so, so then he barges into the school that just issued a restraining order against him to demand <laughs> an explanation of the restraining Seriously, order. Seriously, <laughs> smash through the front door. Why the fuck would you need a restraining order against me? What are you <laughs> doing? Are you serious right now? Slamming his hands on the desk? And he, it's like he's been following bad universe scathing atheists because he's like, why would you forbid me from driving around the school menacing it with the national anthem? And they're like, no, you don't understand. Nobody is allowed to drive around the school playing their favorite song with their favorite flag. And he was like, but I want, I want to. And she was like, no, it's just, it's. But no it's one my gets to favorite. Do it. Like it's not just anybody's <laughs> favorite. Right, exactly. Are you also a non functional alcoholic from earlier in the movie? We know that, and you're driving around next to a school all the time. Right. Maybe don't do that also, regardless of all the other stuff. <laughs> so and then he demands to know why the quarterback for the school would take a knee during the national anthem. And I was thinking to myself, like, well, probably because when he thinks the uh, of the American flag, he thinks of assholes like you. Yeah. Right? Like you're the pro you're the problem the movie is complaining about. <laughs> yeah. And then then they introduce a couple more insane things about this public school in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. One is that they don't do the they banned the Pledge of Allegiance at the school. Fifteen years ago, right? Yeah. So yeah. during right. we haven't done the pledge Bush in thirty years. Yeah. <laughs> Nonsense. And they completely got rid of all their American flags at this school. They do not yes. ever fly flags. Nope. At this no public flags school. In, in Louisiana. Fuck mudfuck stick Louisiana. Get out of here. <laughs> yes. And just as you're trying to recover from that line. We have the moment where, like, the school principal shamefacedly admits that she did, in fact, get the COVID vaccine. Like, she's saying she molests the kids. Yeah. So, so yeah, she's like, no, I, I had to get the vaccine because um, <laughs> because it's just like the Holocaust. Right. right now no, it's like for the, all of us. Yep. Uh, only only you have the bravery required to hold out. Do they have a museum about that we could go to? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well. To go any lower than this, you need special pressure suits, and this movie has a lot lower to go. So we're going to pause to don those real quick. But when we come back, we'll dive into even more to die for. That'll be $44. Wow, for eggs? Yeah, sorry. Florida made all its chickens illegal? Yeah, I, th I think I read about that. Has this ever happened to you? It feels like prices are going up everywhere these days. From the grocery store to the gas pump, Inflation is everywhere. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. What's Mint Mobile? As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right. Looks like I'm going to be able to afford these eggs after all. Well, that depends. Are you an Ammonite? Uh, no. Oh, good. I'm allowed to ask that now. No, I, I know you are, man. I know. Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that's why you can't drive around the school playing the national anthem anymore. Let me ask you something. You take the shot. The vaccine? Yeah, I did. Huh. I wish people cared a bit more about freedom than their damn reputations in this town. R right, yeah. Um. So, how's your health? My health is my damn business, thank you. Oh, cool. Um. So, you don't use hospitals at all? Sorry, what? Oh, no, you just gave a super dismissive answer about your health. So, I just want to be clear that you're not going to treat your body terribly your whole life acting as though you're too tough to care about it, and then in the last years of your life, suck up a whole bunch of medical resources 
when the stakes become real to you all of a sudden. Uh, well, I just, you see... Because if you're a certified badass who wants to die choking on bile in your house, I'm not going to stop you. But if you're going to refuse the free medicine, I just want to make sure you aren't going to use up all the very, very expensive medicine as a result. Oh, I'm kind of a metaphor for conservatism, aren't I? Sure are, Quint. Sure are. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with the two cop friends practicing up at the Bear Arms gun range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their, uh, their shooting range scene is kind of ruined by the fact that they're still using that laser gun sound effects pack. So every time they shoot, it's like, pick you, pick you. The, the, dude, the guy cop actually is making Pikachu noises with his fucking mouth. <laughs> When you he shoots his gun, because they, sure. they're not actually firing the gun, right? They're just putting like a little muzzle flare on it and in After Effects. But he's just going pew, 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 for sure. The, the camera guy or the director was like, Don't, "You're doing it again. You're still doing it. You're still doing it." Dude, no, wait, no. no, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> so yes, John Schneider was like, "Look, I get it. I sometimes I pursue, pursue just like with my fingers. Like this is the most <laughs> impossible thing, but got to do it." We get this verbatim exchange. The lady cop says. What are we going to do about Quint? And the man cop goes, I don't know what we're going to do about Quint. <laughs> you think we should gun down that amazing American patriot hero with a large penis using our fascism power? <laughs> Tough call. Mm. I don't know. That's the plot of our movie now, though. Yeah. We'll find <laughs> out. So we cut to Quint that night. He's sadly watching his cable list TV somehow. I don't even fucking know how you do that. <laughs> And I wrote my notes at this point. I'm like, okay, wait. So he's a sad sack that sits around all night drinking to the TV, but also does fucking one-armed push-ups every night while whispering <laughs> jingoistic poems? Like, pick a cliche. <laughs> he's got a schedule. Half, first half of the night, every third Thursday is <laughs> drinking in front of the TV night. And then if the TV had just gone to color bars and like, ee, like that actually would have been pretty funny. Oh, that <laughs> so he was watching the middle of the night. Stuff. Yeah. So then, okay, so the next morning he does his flag routine again, but this time he accidentally knocks over his favorite coffee mug. This will never come up again in the movie, but he just <laughs> will spend like a minute and a half looking at it. The dog will look at it like, yeah, how the dog dare whines. you? <laughs> yeah. It is as though, again, everything in this movie is motivated by John Schneider going, and another thing, and he's got and another thing I knocked over my coffee cup this morning. That's going to make it in a fucking movie. I love that cup. It was not too big that it hurt my tummy, not too small that I didn't get enough caffeine. It was perfect. Perfect, I say. So then, so we cut back to, it's the next day. He's having breakfast with the cops at the diner again. They're talking about the importance of driving in front of the school while blaring music at it while... Hoisting a flag 25 feet in the air, right? Yes. In this conversation, he says, patriotism isn't subjective. And I wrote in my notes, it literally depends on what country you are How from. patriotic <laughs> are you about Argentina, John <laughs> Schneider? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. No, he says some things are not subjective. And I was like, correct. And whatever you say next is going to be objectively wrong. It's and be then he's incorrect. like, like <laughs> patriotism. <laughs> And I was like, yep, there it is. No, that was, yep. Yeah, exactly. No, he's like, no, some things aren't subjective. I'm like, yeah, man, that's, we wouldn't have the word subjective if all things, Jesus, what the, f anyway, yeah. So they warn him not to flag his way around the damn school anymore. So we cut to him flagging his way around the damn school some more. Mm hmm Right? And be, this, God, this movie is so stupidly written. A different cop pulls him over. Right? This is Big Mac. We have to introduce a third cop into the movie for no fucking reason. Let's give credit where credit is due. Big Mac, this actor, managed to act in this movie without stopping his Candy Crush game the entire time. Because <laughs> it's, it's the opening scene. You see him playing video games and you're like, ah, yes, the lazy security officer at the school. But no, for the rest of the film, whenever he's talking to John Schneider, he'll be like, <laughs> sprinkly ball. Yeah, no, you're a great... <laughs> You understand freedom in a way that we never would. Yeah. So, oh, so two blues. He pulls him over and he says, hey, you know, the restraining order is not in effect yet. I'm just warning you that, like, if you do this after the restraining order goes into effect, it'll have consequences. And he's like, this movie could really use some fucking consequences. We're more than a third of the way through. <laughs> yeah. 
And he's like, you were in Baghdad because all soldiers have fucking smell where you served powers on each other, apparently. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's a great moment where he's like, you know, you do this uh, fellow soldier. And he's like, first of all, I'm not a soldier anymore. And he's like, you're always a soldier. And I wrote in my notes, no, nope, literally not. Not literally always a soldier. Some things are not <laughs> subjective. And what that means <laughs> <laughs> is that you're not now. He's like, he's like, why would you do this to me? He's like, it's literally my job. And he's like, someday you're going to have to choose between your job and your country. And he's like, yeah, but not now. Not you're you. You're just some crazy old bastard harassing people while they try to get a high school education. <laughs> do you think you're the country? <laughs> you're the opposite of the country. You know that because you're breaking the country's laws. It's mm-hmm. you versus the country. Right. Yeah. That's how the, the courts will describe we it. We didn't even win Vietnam. We won the war I was in in Baghdad. We yeah, at least we won that one. I like <laughs> soldiers who win wars. So he heads home and he racist said his neighbor some, right? And then that fucking knee taken high school quarterback walks by. So Quint gives him a piece of his mind. Okay. Can we talk about the high school quarterback? The 106 pound quarterback. Slightly smaller than my three year old. (laughs) He's a lot smaller than your three year old. And John Schneider loses this conversation to him. When this kid's replies are, nah, uh. Yep. Right? At one point, he's like, hey, man, it's not the fucking 4th of July. And John Schneider's like, it's always the 4th of July at my house. And he's like, you sound like an idiot. And he's like, I know. Right. Yes. I wrote the script. <laughs> I, how do I? Because he, like, like, let's keep in mind that he's like, he's heroically berating a 17 year old, right? This guy's in his fucking, what, 60s, 70s? Yeah, he he yells at a child walking uh, walking on the sidewalk. He yells at a child, being like "fuck you, blood traitor," because it's a a white kid who who kneels during the national anthem. I guarantee you, in the script, when John Schneider first wrote this, he was not picturing a white kid for this part. But yeah, somebody talked him into it. (laughs) Yeah, no, he definitely asked the actor who plays the black cop. He was like, "Say your son," and he was like, "I'll shoot you right in the face, John (laughs) Schneider." I'll take these real guns you gave us for your stupid movie and I'll shoot you in the eyeball. I'll hold it to your eyeball and fire the gun until my finger falls off. Also, as as usual in the scene, the audio is terrible. <laughs> and the kid is wearing a varsity jacket, but nobody who made this movie has a varsity jacket for anything. <laughs> Clearly. They have a, like a fake varsity jacket from road microphones support <laughs> and interesting not a good product placement road microphones yeah no. road's real proud of that moment you don't want your name anywhere near this fucking movie <laughs> yikes and then in what i can only assume is an intentionally confusing cut we go from him on his porch in the evening to him arriving to his porch in an evening Except now there's a person waiting on him. So it like in movie universe, it feels like he turned into a woman that's now waiting for himself to arrive on the porch. It's so fucking jarring. (laughs) But at night. Yes. And she she has heard he has a big penis. She has. She mentions that. (laughs) Style. Almost exact words. She's like, I want to drink with you right now. And. Sex your man penis, which is legendary in size, as we all know here in this universe. And like John Schneider wrote that line. He wrote, wrote this movie. This goddamn and th- movie. This woman yes. is just like, all right, I don't know. And he's so this is the love interest. Yes. But you would not know it from this scene because he's just a massive piece of shit to her the entire movie. Right. The first thing he has to say is you should quit smoking because when girls smoke, they taste like an ashtray. Only men are allowed to smoke. And you're waiting for the punchline to that. There's no punchline. That's no. just John Snyder's horrible sexist opinion he wrote into his stupid fucking movie. No, I think you're right because there's no character arc here. This isn't like fucking Clint Eastwood at the beginning of Gran Torino, right? This like he's not going to eventually become less racist or less sexist or less horrible in this movie. At all, in any way. He no. will never change. And in fact, will several times out loud say, it's a good thing I never changed and never will. Yes. Yep. That's the plot of the fucking movie. But she's like, well, I'm the love interest, whether you like it or not. So I'm drinking with you. He's like, fine, damn. So she comes in and they drink together. And then we cut to them waking up the next morning with her like cuddled in his lap. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> because you know John Schneider was like, maybe we wake up naked in the bed. And she was like, do you remember what that guy said when you wanted to use his son in the scene? He oh, shoot me in the eyeball until your finger falls. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. How about sitting in an easy chair together? And she's like, mm, not okay. reclined though. Not yeah. reclined. <laughs> they wake up and it was like, did we fall asleep in plank position together? So yes. That's, <laughs> right. It's insane. <laughs> it's like no Cirque du Soleil fun. position, <laughs> like the hang back. <laughs> Nonsense. So... But there's a knock on the door. There's always a fucking knock on the door, right? So he's like, oh, you got to go out the back door. I'm ashamed of you, so leave, right? And again, he will never change or grow. That's just a yep. thing he does. Yep, in the yeah. fucking movie. And I just, I don't want to bum anybody out, but I do want to zoom out, right? Because like this movie is such an important view into the mind of a shitty man. Right. Because there's, it's so clear. John Schneider was like, he's not a perfect guy. Right. He's rough around the edges. And it's like, no, the character you have written is a massive, irredeemable piece of shit. Yes. He was just also written by a massive, irredeemable piece of shit. And the <laughs> yes. reason why they're all so surprised their bedside is empty when they die is because they all thought they were rough around the edges, heart of golders, and they're not. They just suck. Nah, man. Yep. I'm just rough around the edges, Jew. See, did you hear it? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm going to reach at your edges. I'm going to go inwards. You tell me where the person starts. You see, my hands are touching. Yep. My right. hands are touching. It's just rough. It's rough all the way down, John Schneider. Yep, that's all you got. Pass me that flag. <laughs> I'm going to fuck it. Yeah, so so he kicks her out. He answers the door. It's the daughter, right? The, it's, it's She's there to tell him that the restraining order's going through and he tells her she should be ashamed of herself because he's just trying to celebrate America and she's not ashamed of herself enough. He right? literally says, look, what's right and wrong in this world changes. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, except for me. I'm right count. forever. Right. I've never been incorrect and never will be. Lucky me. I, you know, I wrote my notes. As long as I never change, I'm right. The boomer <laughs> motto. Yeah. Jesus. And then he says this to her. And honestly, please, please tell me what the fuck this is from. <laughs> he says to his daughter, if you're not careful, you'll wind up an unrecognizable corpse. That's the literal fucking line. That, that can only mean if you're not careful, I will mutilate your dead body. Beyond recognition. Yes. If you're not careful around like pools of acid or right like industrial machinery i don't liberals no fucking clue i think that's just something that's been said to him so many times he thinks it's the same <laughs> 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 but she's like hey look i have a, a lawyer friend who can help you with this upcoming thing meet us at a restaurant so we cut to a Mexican restaurant, but don't worry, racistly. <laughs> right? We hear the fucking cliche Mexican music as he shows up at this El Rio Grande restaurant it was so that he can later say, how can it be racist if my character likes tamales? <laughs> he likes Mexican food. That's like the number one way you know someone's not racist. <laughs> So he's talking to this lawyer who luckily is only has to be in this movie for two scenes. And the lawyer is trying to explain to him why laws are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and also just like how spatial geometry works in the universe. He's like, you can drive so many other places that aren't the high school to get to all the places that aren't the high school. You're, you're describing it like you have to go through that little driveway. You get how you don't. Right. And he's like, Jew. <laughs> yep. That's the end of the explanation. No, his answer is actually so much dumber than Jew. I have to talk about it. <laughs> it is he amazing. Says, yes. I bought gas and gas buys me the right to drive down any road I want to. Literally, no. Yeah. He must know that's not true. Well, I I, I disagree that he must know that. Because <laughs> no, because he's paying taxes on that gas, damn it. And those taxes is what built them damn roads. So he can drive down any road <laughs> doing anything. I drive an El Camino. You don't talk to me now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Yes, he does own the road. Then he starts complaining about how they took the flag off the schoolyard because of a bunch of politically correct socialism. 
because of the economic theory what? of socialism. They took what the flag would that mean? <laughs> from a public school in Louisiana. Let's just keep that in mind. He says, don't California, my Louisiana. He does. Yikes. Okay. So I looked up some stats whenever he said that. These were literally the first three stats I looked up, okay? Average income, California, fifth. Louisiana, 48th. Aww. This is a 50, of course. Best health care, California, sixth. Louisiana, 46th. Ooh, not great. Oh, they got better. Lowest <laughs> infant mortality, California, second. Louisiana, 40 fucking ninth. Lu oh. Somebody please California his Louisiana. My God, <laughs> for the sake of the children. Okay, but you know Louisiana was like, we're ahead of West Virginia on killing yeah. babies. <laughs> Fuck yes. Yeah, high five. <laughs> and Uncle Stan put your name at the top of his <laughs> list. Jesus. And then, and I, I, I couldn't write a meaner thing about this character. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I forgot my wallet. You have to pay for my food. Why? Why would you have your <laughs> yes. character do that? You complained about socialism two seconds ago, and now you're like... <laughs> So, I would like a free lunch. Yes. It's the ultimate boomer moment, right? I'm here to insult you and get my lunch paid for. Squint, nan, nan, and make yes. Right. He might as well destroy the table behind him so that no one else can ever <laughs> eat there again. <laughs> so, okay. So we cut to the courthouse because they think restraining orders have trials here. And his lawyer, uh, John Schneider's lawyer, apparently stopped smoking <laughs> meth out of a monster energy drink can long enough to do an opening statement. Like, this actor, come on, tell me this actor isn't actively smoking meth while acting. <laughs> Somehow he's got an invisible vape of meth that yeah. we can't see. Yes, absolutely. He looks like someone made a fuck doll out of Billy Bob Thornton's dead body. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's like a cannibal who forgot to keep eating because of the meth <laughs> exactly. habit. It feels like to right. Me. Yeah, yeah. And we uh -huh. cut to him so jarringly, but then he's talking in lawyer talk. It's I laughed out loud for a oh, while while this guy was he talking. He was great. Then we cut to the judge. Now, I honestly think that this is the greatest gam moment since Mike Lindell farted into his voice modulator, guys. The judge has an earpiece in that is feeding his lines to him. <laughs> Yep. And we can hear it. So we can hear we it. Can yeah. My, hear it doing that. We can hear it. And so you're in the weird future where the guy finally says his lines. And this monologue John Schneider wrote for him <laughs> is insane. Look, we all agree Mr. Quint is awesome and correct and he has a very large penis, but my <laughs> hands are tied by laws. He says laws disgust me. And I wrote, really? Yes. Why are you a judge? He says he would like to jail every, quote, every flag-burning, knee-taking enemy of the greatest country the world has ever known, but, end quote. <laughs> and now I shall sing the entirety of It's a Grand Old Flag. <laughs> And again, we're hearing this through the earpiece yes. the whole time ahead yes. of it. So yeah, but but ultimate, but the but the judge does find that he can't drive by the school anymore, even though the judge secretly agree or but I guess publicly agrees with him. So then we <laughs> he drives off to sadly contemplate flags in a little sad flag montage. A flag montage. Okay. This is this is so good. This is fucking John Schneider's Iwo Jima. It's so yes. mm -hmm. good. And, but it's so sad because it's it's his Iwo Jima, but it's this tiny little flag at this moment that he's sticking into the ground and in the background is a Domino's pizza. Very visible <laughs> Domino's. Yes. Yes. Just oh, such a... Fucking just, sad. And now I take my final stand outside of Domino's store <laughs> number 2287. <laughs> Just like the fallen troops would have liked. I like my coffee black, my quarterbacks white, and World War II, this is oh, the same. So <laughs> I think literally I would have rather lost World War II than oh, have given John Schneider a grounding for his beliefs. I mean, the Asia part, we, could, we would have been fine without that, right? So, it's, 
So then, but he plants this tiny little flag out in front of the school, right, where they used to fly a full-size American flag. And then he pledges allegiance to it. We have a whole scene where he does the full pledge of allegiance and salutes his tiny-ass little flag. And then Big Mac the cop shows up to <laughs> arrest him for illegal flag reverence. Now, <laughs> now guys... It, this movie is terrible and his beliefs are terrible. Is there a way to make this movie psychotically dangerous? Uh, firearms, probably. Well, yes, exactly. Let's arm the fucking fascist yeah, who no, let's can't have, stop let's have breaking this guy. the law. Let's have this extremely drunk man who's been driving around next to a school also have a firearm and make jokes about it. Yeah, he's a real scamp about his unregistered firearm when fucking Big Mac is like, okay, you got to give me your gun because you're the definition of a person who shouldn't have a gun. He's like, you can take it, but I can't hand it over. It's superstition. And nobody in the movie is like, no. I'll fucking shoot you in the body till you die, you piece of the, shit. The correct right. answer to that is stop resisting taser. Yes. And now you, you take the gun. The correct answer to that is bang, 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 <laughs> yeah. bang, bang, bang. I Click. think pachoo, pachoo, but yeah, yeah, exactly. In this universe, bang, it's bang, like bang, pachoo. bang, bang. Oh, look at you're taking a knee because I shot you, huh? This is so funny. I'm a black cop. This right. is so much, there's so much irony right, right now. Oh my God, this is great. This is great. I'm shooting you with the taser. Oh, this is great. But then they let him out of jail. I guess the, the chick that he kicked out the back door came and bailed him out. Yep. And this is when he has this big idea. He like he sees notices some like white chalk or some paint or something on his fingers. And he's like, that's it. <laughs> this is so stupid. OK, I, I'm curious. I don't I don't know for sure what happened here. It wasn't clear when I was watching. Now I've seen the whole movie and I'm still not sure. Did he get a little bit of chalk on his hand? Look at it and be like, white is a color. What else is colors? Paint. paint. Yep. Paint yep. is something yep. that which has yes. colors. You, you connected the dots there, Jeff That's Goldblum. It? You did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually it. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus Christ. And he actually, it's so good. He thought of something and then he says to himself, I wish I had thought of that. Yep. <laughs> to, to nobody, to himself. What he had thought of was, I know something that has photon reflection properties that's also <laughs> yes. available to me called paint. Nailed it. Yeah. So, okay. So first he goes to his liberal neighbor's house and he says, hey, I promise to stop flying my flag off of my car if you promise not to like press charges against me for any of my many crimes against you. And he's like, yeah, I'll do that. And then he says to the character that, again, is supposed to be Native American. He says, OK, I wouldn't I want to make sure that you're not an Indian giver. Huh? Yikes. Huh? God, I wanted Wes to just slowly wrestle him to the ground, sleeper hold, and then be like, Indian burn on your arm. So I'm going to do this forever now. <laughs> what do you call it? He calls it an Indian burn, right? Classic. <laughs> this actor, by the way, six degree black belt. Ooh. I'm taser you now, too. sure he really wanted to do that. <laughs> I'll hit you with my car. <laughs> oh, Wes, the actor is? Yeah. 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 Nice. So, and, and we should point out like how incredibly just almost like intentionally tone deaf it is to have the, the liberal in your movie that hates the American flag be a Native American. Yes. Right. Like this should be a metrosexual, right? This should be fucking Eli. Right. Oh, right? yeah. This was should insane. be the person that hates the flag. But it's the it's it's a Native American who repeatedly says, no, man, it's because of the genocide. And it represents a genocide against my people. And he's like, you suck. This is, you wrote the movie, man. Again, just, you want a, an answer to why do you hate the flag to not win? Yes. When the other guy says the answer that he's going to have and his answer is like, well, mostly the genocide, the literal genocide probably yeah. is why I hate it. And by the way, if you're wondering how John Schneider wins this argument, he's like, well, do you dress like an American or you dress like a ugga wugga woo woo woo? And he's like, <laughs> I dress Christ, in modern dress. And he's like, ha, got it. Got you. You're an Amer yes. America invented clothes. So you're an American. Right. <laughs> Hunt a buffalo right now. Nope. You're white. Too slow. What? Right. That's it. That's literally what he says. He says, do you dress like uh, your your ancestors do? Do you hunt buffalo? And I'm like, do you wear a fucking suit of armor or the simple robes of a medieval goddamn monk? Yeah. No, then shut the fuck up. What the hell would that be about? Do you Why? trap fucking <laughs> rabbits? Then you're not really a European. 
Why don't what? you have a powdered wig and wooden teeth right now like George Washington? <laughs> You're fake. You're actually an Indian. Oh, Think about it now. That is the dumbest argument that we've been presented on this show since fucking Kevin Sorbo says what is what gives ISIS the right to cut off people's heads. Yep. <laughs> since Matt Powell called Stephen Hawking the R slur. We yes, really yes. haven't seen. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So the next morning, it's time to put his big photon reflecting plan in place. So he goes to the hardware store. <laughs> Right. And he goes to the, he says to the hardware store guy, he's like, give me the biggest flagpole you've got. And Amazing. he says, well, we don't have this because, you know, we're a we're a store. But because this movie is so <laughs> fucking stupid, the actual line is, quote, if you want flagpoles, go to the flagpole store. God, I wanted this owner to be like, oh, no, we only carry fucking uh, totem fire and uh, stripper. So. <laughs> <laughs> for flags, There's a flagpole store gotta, over by the go Domino's, though. So it's yeah. a strip yeah, no, I get because we have pole, we have poles. But no, it's a flag store primarily that you're looking for that has the right pole. And then when I thought this movie couldn't get any fucking dumber, <laughs> he's like, I need paint. And he's like, what colors do you need? And he says, he says, podcast listener. What does he say, Eli? <laughs> There's only three colors. Red, white and blue. <laughs> and I literally do not know if John Schneider knows there are colors other than red, <laughs> white, and blue. Somebody shows like him orange, orange his whole like, ah! world. Yeah, the yeah. whole world falls apart. <laughs> so then we cut to him on his porch painting a big giant flag on his house, which is amazing because then these colors run, right? I mean, that's <laughs> the necessary result of that. But love interest happens by it. And I'm sorry to call her love interest. I don't think this character ever gets a name at any point in the movie. I believe that's correct. But she happens by and she's like, oh, that looks great. It really makes me want to fuck you with your giant penis. Mm -hmm. And then the quarterback kid walks by and he's like, that looks dumb. You look stupid. This is terrifying. Did you think this was a win? You're an idiot. You painted your house to look like a flag. And he's like, you are. Nope. You. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come back and say different lines I wrote for you in my movie. <laughs> Can we all just agree, though, that this wall should be prosecuted? Like, this is a yes. pre-crime. Like, I know Minority Report, we probably shouldn't do that ethically. But, like, this is a pre-hate crime. 100% of people who have done this will do a hate crime afterwards. Unless they die right away. Even in this movie, right? Because in this movie, he's going to do several hate crimes after this. <laughs> that is true. Oh, he will. Yes. He does. That he yes. wrote himself. Yep. Mm -hmm. In his movie. So, but the love interest is so impressed with his wall that she takes him to dinner at a fancy restaurant. And then we have this conversation again that he wrote for himself about how heroic he is. <laughs> okay, because here's what happened. Here's what <laughs> has to have happened. Okay. He showed this movie to an adult, maybe at a library, and they were like, this guy's a piece of shit. And he was like, no, he's not. He's an anti-hero. And they were like, nope, he's just a piece of shit. And he was like, I'm putting a scene in where someone just says, <laughs> so you're the anti-hero. That way, no Jews at the library can be confused. <laughs> so, so, but, but yeah, but he explains he's not a hero or an anti-hero. He's a patriot. And she's like, we should move in. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've lost my mind. Maybe the rest of the review, I'm just going to be like, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> You guys might have to do the heavy lifting in the second half. I think I only had 416 and a half episodes in the episode. So Seriously, we get that anti-hero line and then she's like, okay, well, not that. Then what are you? And I was like, he's going to say, I'm Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now. <laughs> no, he says, I'm the Patriot. And then they decide to move in together. Yes. <laughs> because according to him, we're both miserable and lonely people. So yeah, let's uh, shack it up. Right. No, she's like, we should move in together. You're not going to do any better than me at your age. And he's like, yeah, fine. But he gets home and the neighbor is standing on his porch admiring his flag painting. So he gets his gun. So he draws his gun because he saw his neighbor standing. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so we cut to the neighbor on the porch. The neighbor at this point is literally quoting from one of the treaties that America violated during the genocide of his people under his breath in this moment. 
And he's like, stop or I'll murder you. Yes. And he's like, follow that trail of tears right there off my property, motherfucker. Oh, I'm going to count to three. Christ. It's terrifying. He pulls a gun and he says, like, get off my land. I'm going to shoot you. Yeah. And then the cops show up. He's like, wait, who called you? He's like, we just hang out outside of your house. Like Heath says, you're just the worst. So we're you're always the worst. Here. We just assume all <laughs> crimes are being done. And look at this. You're always within seconds of a hate crime. Bat in a thousand. Throughout. Everybody watching the movie has seen that that's true every time. Have you seen your fucking porch? Yeah. Watch, if I walk away for five seconds, you'll start to do another hate crime. Watch, two. Yep. Three, he there doesn't have to fucking walk away, though, because like, like during this conversation, John Schneider keeps pointing his gun at the neighbor saying, he's on my property, I'm going to kill him. By the way, you can't kill someone for being on your property. There is the castle doctrine, which is dangerous and stupid in a lot of fucking ways, but like that doesn't count if they're in your yard. Yes, yeah, you know, the reason the movie keeps showing him stepping onto the yard is because that's what fucking John... John Steiner thinks fucking the castle doctrine is, is that yes. you could just like he thinks there's a magic line of the property yep. easements. Right. right. And, and then murder, murder is free yes. on the other side of that line. Yep. And the cops are like, look, we hate to say it, but technically, ugh, you're not allowed to threaten to murder someone. So we're going to take your gun away and give it back to you tomorrow. Yes. Yes, the way they treated my garbage pail kids in elementary school when I got out of hand is the way they're going to treat his deadly firearm. Also, to be clear, every single person, anything like John Schneider's character here, owns 19 more guns right inside that house. Sure does. They're taking away one gun. He's He could go get an automatic, an AR-15 for sure, yep. right inside that fucking door. So then we get we 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 get another workout, but like it's so clearly the dumbed down version of the last one because he like hurt himself for several days with that first montage where he did the heavy bag and everything. So now he's just like you know he's just doing an elliptical, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and he's doing like a slam poetry recitation of the national anthem to yep, himself he sure this is. time. Yes, he sure is very sexual. Oh, there's another knock on the door. It takes him for, for like 40% of this movie is us waiting for him to answer his door. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like calling mm -hmm. Heath, but in person. Because he, again, as he was writing this, he was like, and then another thing about Native American, you just get out. And then he paused because he was like, shit, time for a new scene. Knock, knock, knock. Yeah. And then there was a knock at the door. There it is. There's yeah, the plot. His, his scenes and his jokes all start the same, I guess. But yeah, but it's the neighbor. He's brought over a peace offering bottle of Jack Daniels. And, and he's there to tell John Schneider that he's actually pretty impressed with his jingoism and his commitment to loving America. Yeah. Hey, podcast listener, you remember that joke Heath made earlier in our fun comedy podcast about you're more of an Indian than I am? That is the actual line they wrote for a Mexican to say while pretending to be a Native American in this movie. The that actual line exactly is, quote, will happen. you're my people more than my people ever were. That's a line that John Schneider wrote for another actor to say about him. I didn't think I believed in words having the death penalty, but now I do. <laughs> it's yeah. those in that order. No, th this is Ooh. Wes being like, yeah, I thought about what you said the other day. I have never killed a buffalo with a bow and arrow, and I went to the casino the other day. So I'm white, and you're the Native American. You're better than me. That's the speech we get. Yeah, I have to give you my ethnicity because you've earned it more than I have. Not just more than me, more than any Anyone. Indian yes. Yes. ever. Yes. You're the most Native American of all, of even the ones who shot Buffalo. Yes, yes, clearly that's what he's <sighs> saying. There must be, this must fall under like pornography laws or something, right? <laughs> You're not allowed to fuck kids on film. We must have a law about having oh these words God. appear on film. So now, so we get him back in his grave talking about that last scene, telling his dead wife that he's just trying to race us hard enough at the neighbor, but it's getting harder and harder. I, for one, feel like the cicadas fucking on the microphone just adds to the realism. <laughs> 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 of all the fucking scenes you didn't green screen, the one that you fucking filmed in the middle of the grasshopper field. 
And again, he's talking to nobody. Again, like the whole movie, it's just John Schneider doing an angry blog to himself, but then translated <laughs> into a universe where he would have people to listen to him. Yeah. Except it's dead people in his imagined universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot to process here. So we're going to pause for another quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will these colors ever run? Oh, say, can you see? Tis my country of thee. Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the flagstribation ending of To Die For. Heath, Heath, what's the matter? Yeah, man, you're making pre-advertisement frustration noises. What happened? A live show in Las Vegas happened, that's what. What are you talking about? Ticket sales have been great. Too great, actually. Platinum Night already sold out, and now I can't go. Keith, you know that you don't have to Hey, buy a- you know what? You don't have to worry, is what Noah was going to say. Because, what? Yeah, because in addition to having VIP and general admission tickets still available, we just opened up Iridium Night. Wait, wait, wait. what's Iridium Night? Well, it's just like Platinum Night. It's a night of food, drinks, games, and fun with us. But we do it on the Thursday before the show instead of the Friday before. So there's still time? There's still time. Head over to godawfulmovieslive.com to grab your general admission VIP or Iridium Night tickets now. But don't wait because we're definitely going to sell out of those as well. All right. Thanks. You guys must have bought your Platinum and Iridium tickets like right away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did. Lucky. Yeah, we... We sure are, buddy. Bucky. Fast. Louisiana police, can I help you? Yeah, there's a guy blasting the national anthem at the high school with a flag going off the back of his truck. Oh, yeah, that's Quint. <laughs> He's a wily old coot. Sorry, yeah, don't they have a restraining order against him, though? Yeah, yeah, sad to say they do. Right, uh, doesn't seem sad to me. Anyway, are you guys going to come arrest him or something? Nah, but we're going to ruefully shake our heads and say his name. Aren't we, Vic? Oh, quit that old tarball. Okay. Tarball. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's nothing. Not the point. I also notice he's just verbally abusing his neighbor with racial slurs, like, constantly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's an ornery one, but it ain't against the law to say your piece. Huh? I think maybe it is sometimes. Like, very much illegal to hurl racial slurs at somebody while they're in their home. Whole section of laws, actually. Pretty sure. Mm, sir, I assure you, we are taking this matter very seriously. Okay, we will discuss it with Quint at breakfast tomorrow. We sure will. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, you eat breakfast with the hate criminal? Every single morning. Every morning. Great. You know you're the bad guys in a different action movie, right? Yeah, I expect Rambo's going to come kick our asses any day now. Okay. Well, as long as you know. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to rejoin the action with Quint finally getting that phone call from the military that he's been waiting for. Now, we haven't mentioned this up to this point, but like in nine different conversations, he's like, did you get, somebody's like, did you get the call yet? And he's like, I haven't gotten the call yet, but I'll get the call in Act 3. Well, it's Act 3 now, so he gets the call. Yeah. So they finally want 74-year-old convicted criminals to (laughs) jump to the front lines of whatever forever war we're in now. He's yep. being called up. <laughs> being called up at age 60, whatever. And he thinks that's really happening. Again, this is what they picture, though. Oh, yep. yeah. This is the dream. Yeah, this is the fucking old man fantasy. Yeah. This is the dream. Uh-huh. I would be useful. I'd be killing you know, people of color. And that's all I know how to do my whole life. Great. Mm-hmm. So he's back in. So he goes to the barber and he's like, hey, barber, I got called back to the military. I need a military flat top. Also, you apparently have to shave my entire body like a baby seal because that's part of the military hair code. Well, right, so he doesn't pull his skin off when he's doing dive rolls. He, okay, no, he, he, he literally says that. that. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> if I go into a controlled slide on my hog during a mission, I'm 65. Yeah. Can't have hair in the way. Because he's he's shaving his body smooth. And hey, no Tino shade if you want to shave your body smooth. Sure, you do whatever do you it. want with your body hair. But he's like, I ain't no homo. It's to prevent a burn. And he's like, you mean like a slur burn? And he's like, yeah, it let's does. use a yeah. slur. That's- <laughs> I was just like, is there anything that you guys don't have a racist old timey name for, for fuck's sake? Yes. Hey, do you have change for a dollar or as I call it a kike? Do you have a kike for a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> you got one of those? Take a kike for a dollar. And- 
<laughs> the reaction shots of the people in the barbershop are fucking fantastic because they make like a montage out of him just getting a fucking haircut, which yep, is stupid. They sure do. And then you see like just random people who like don't fucking care at all. But they're, they're like supposed to be getting like, oh, my God, he's fucking doing it. He's going to be able to do a controlled <laughs> slide on his hog. What? <laughs> and then they close the big thing with it's supposed to be the G.I. Jane moment, basically. Yes. But right. like instead of Demi Moore now has a crew cut, it's, we see fucking old catcher's mitt face of John Schneider. Who he now looks has so silly. A bit of a military haircut. It's so this, funny. It, Trash bag, twisty tied kind of a thing. It's he looks so dumb. He looks like post rehab Lemonhead logo, <laughs> right? Like the Lemonhead logo is clean now. He talks about Jesus a lot. He goes to bed at eight, but like you know what? He's not doing meth anymore, and we're real proud of him. <laughs> So then, so Quint's back at his house. He's telling his dog goodbye because he's going active duty. And the quarterback kid comes to talk shit about his dog. This is the part of the movie where I shit you not, this would have happened if I wrote it. He has his big, dramatic, literal telling a teenager to get off his lawn. <laughs> literally <laughs> get off my lawn. Happens. It's literally the stakes of this scene. <laughs> he's yelling at a child to get off his lawn. Or I'll hit you with this crowbar. I'm the protagonist of this movie. I'm that I the wrote. hero. In your throwing arm, quarterback kid. Yes. Uh huh. He threatens the kid with a fucking crowbar. The child. And again, this kid is not quarterback size. He's a 106 pound kid. So this dude is threatening this tiny little kid with a yes. crowbar for standing one inch onto his property. Heath has held. My hand while I take shits larger than this actor who plays the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, he does kind of ruin the moment of the threat when he says, Your elbow's about to look like a flamingo's knee. And can I just say, like, flamingo? Impossible to say menacingly. No, you, it can't be gruff and menacing now. Flamingo, you flamingo man. <laughs> you can't. There's no way to do I don't care if fucking John Wayne and Clint Eastwood put guns to either side of my head and nope. whispered it into Stalin's ear. You're still going to sound like a silly children's book. Now I'm, I'm just picturing like a majestic pink thing taking off. And I'm yep. like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Nope. That's it. And But then he's like, okay, this kid uh, clearly doesn't have a father. I'm going to ask him about it. And he's like, so what's up? How come like your dad never taught you that you don't take a knee during the anthem? And of course, this kid is like, I never met my father. And that's why I am against cops murdering black people. And John Schneider's like, got him. I just won that. Got him. I yeah. knew it. I knew you didn't have a dad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is when I wrote in my notes. Okay, now I'm 10,000% sure this character was black in John's original vision. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we also, we cut over and we see that the quarterback and his buddies are out looking for a car to steal. That's going to come back in... 25 hours. The movie won't realize that, but it's the whole day goes by that they're looking for that car, apparently. So, but he's stopping to see the love interest and tell her that, like, he's shipping out. I love this moment, too, because the actress, like, keeps thinking that they're going to cut and they don't. So she has to, like, restart her vamping again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. And he dressed like an army man for the meet. Yeah. He dressed it. Hey, guys, I'm, I, I know non veterans on this podcast. Do you bring your own army man clothes when they call you to the military? Or is that something they provide for you? For sure, 100%. You got to bring yeah, your no, own. I'm sure that, yeah, he's, he probably, yeah, no, he's, he's kept up with it, made sure that they were the right size through, at, throughout sure, his yeah. retirement. Like when I went to my high school reunion, I wore my soccer jersey that didn't fit. Right, at no, all. exactly. Is that right? Yeah. yeah it right. was a belly shirt. Well, I wore just a diaper when I went to my preschool reunion. Sure. <laughs> But he shows up, John Schneider shows up at this warehouse, which is, I guess, the pickup point for, you know, 65-year-old military veterans being called back to active duty. Or is it? Oh, it was a prank. But it was a, here's the thing. It was a <laughs> prank by the cops. Yeah. Right. I assumed that the kids had done this. The kids right. that had stolen, were stealing the car were also fucking with him about being called. But no. That would have made sense. It's his friends, the cops. Well, they fucking hate him. Well, that's it, true. It, to yeah. be fair. Do they hate him? They keep letting him get away with crimes. I think the movie became sentient and like did a prank on him. <laughs> These characters are like, no, we hate this guy. <laughs> if this was a character who had any likability, 
any at all watching this happen to him would make me sad. But I'm just like, good. Yeah. Fucking Fuck that guy. Hit him with yeah. the car. Like crush him between the car that you're driving and the wall and then just <laughs> leave him there to be juiced onto the ground. Like there's nothing <laughs> redeeming about whatever John Schneider wanted me to feel in this moment. I was like, hit him again. Like I could not right. have given yes. less of a shit. So, but yeah, but he gets out and he's like reporting for duty and they're like, nice haircut. Ha ha. Got you. And then he, he drives off and contemplates suicide in a cheap motel parking lot. I chanted do it so loud that my <laughs> wife, who was wearing headphones in the backyard, was like, do what? <laughs> <laughs> That's how loud so, I chanted do it. So, yeah, he decides not to suicide after all. He decides instead to kidnap his neighbor for being a race he doesn't like. Literally, what kid, like happened? chloroform yeah. level Literally, kidnaps his neighbor. Chloroform rag. I'm going to kidnap my Native American neighbor who I hurl ethnic slurs at constantly. Yes. Was the next plot point in this movie. It's like the beginning of a terrible, terrible impression. Sketch. Yes. <laughs> it's like, how am I going to kidnap this Native American guy with this chloroform? And like, that's how they start a scene. Yeah. I have written several times throughout my notes that this is a horror movie for everyone but Quint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, and, and now like, he's going to kidnap him so that he can tie him to a chair, menace him with a gun, and just hurl fucking stream of consciousness racism at him. I couldn't think of another scene with us in it, so my character literally kidnaps you. I don't. <laughs> yeah. This is where we learn for no reason, and this will be of no consequence, that the neighbor's wife has cancer. Right. Well, well the reason John that Schneider's wife has cancer is so that John Schneider can go, yeah, well, chemo doesn't work anyways. <laughs> Yeah, right. No, yeah. He, and to be fair, in <laughs> yeah, his experience. John Schneider's 0 for 1. No, he, sa he says in here, he's like, you know, it's the treatment that kills you, not the cancer. Just in case there was a poisonous <laughs> so message stupid. they forgot to include here. Mm -hmm. You know who's dying all the time? Fucking cancer patients. Coincidence? Right, yes. Coincidence? <laughs> no, man. Oh, no. I don't even know the other colors, let alone how the fuck chemo works. And then Quint says again to the Native American character, hey, why don't you just leave this country altogether? Why don't, if you don't like it, get out. The only minority group you absolutely, by your own logic, can't say that to right. is Native American. <laughs> yes. Well, and then this is where, again, in the movie that he wrote, he says, hey, man, um, just so you know that the neighbor does, I'm a veteran. I fought in the army. I was in Afghanistan. And then I learned a little more about the genocides that founded this country, the genocides against my people. And now I, I am embittered by that. Right. And what is John Schneider's answer to? I am actually a veteran and still am allowed to have issues with this country. Uh, no, you're not. You can no, go. Uh -uh. I said, no, uh -uh. no, you can't double stamp. Yeah. Triple stamp. So, yeah. And <laughs> Can you guys see the ships that my ancestors rode in on? I <laughs> oh, Jesus is that Christ. invisible to I you? Heard, the Mayflower? Wait, I drew a picture of a dog with four heads. Can you see this? Because I, <laughs> I know you've never seen a dog with four heads before. <laughs> so, and then we're, we're treated to another no-budget backyard Vietnam flashback here. During the flashback, somebody's knocking on his door while he's flashing back just so that, again, 40% of this movie can be waiting on him to answer his Waiting on door. him to answer a door. Yeah. How else do you get from what? He can't kidnap her. He just kidnapped someone in the last scene. No. How is he that's supposed true. to transition? Yeah, she has to show up knocking Think. on his door. Mm, so much chloroform. <laughs> so, yeah, but he's woken up from his flashback by the love interest who's brought to coffee. She lives with him now. But she's showing up knocking on the fucking door, apparently, in this scene. And she's got two coffees and she says, oh, and heads up, uh, the cops are over there talking to your neighbor about you kidnapping him last night at gunpoint. So um, we should probably go. We should go. Yeah, let's do a fun scamper. My hijinks have gotten real shenanigonious. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's skip town for a bit. So we cut over to the cops. They're taking the statement from the neighbor about the fucking the kidnapping and the 
the neighbor guy, West, doesn't want to press charges because, you know, it was just an innocent kidnapping at gunpoint among friends. It's a beautiful white man with a huge penis. Just, you know, he's misunderstood by the world. It was not a kidnapping. <laughs> he needed someone to monologue at. And if kidnapping someone because you don't have anyone to monologue to is illegal, then throw us all in jail. I'm John Schneider. <laughs> So, also, we might have switched I'm, races. Like, I think I'm white now and he's Native American. I don't even know if you're allowed to arrest him at that point. It's are technically you? a hate crime if I commit the charges. <laughs> no, but the wife is like, okay, I'll fire charges. And the cops are like, no, no. Kidnapping's only illegal if the person goes kidnap, <laughs> kidnap. <laughs> Yeah. Did he touch you with the ether directly? No, but I'm still pressing. They're like, no, it doesn't no, count. Can't doesn't touch him, can't get mad. And I, I should point out to, okay, because they're, they're cutting between this scene and Quentin, the love interest in a boat, like having a romantic afternoon together. But because, again, all of these scenes, none of these actors are in the same room. They're all sitting in front of different green screens and it's all being edited together. So it feels like Quint and the love interest are also in that room with them. But the part of their room that they're in has a lake in it. It's has a lake so in it, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, I, I and of course the conversation that they're having that that Quentin the love interest are having. He's she's going like, "Do you ever wish that you had changed in any way or grown with the world?" And him going, "Nope, not at nope. all." And she's like, "Good, good, because you have an enormous penis." <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's so good. I'm gonna quit smoking right now. I'm going to quit smoking because it's gross for ladies to do that. I'm going to replace it with that dick. And then yep. that's the end of the scene. <laughs> that's what, literally what she says. Right. No, her, her, <laughs> well, she doesn't literally say replace it with that dick, but yeah. Figuratively what she says. Yes. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but his sexism cured her pre-cancer, I guess. Right. So, okay. So he drives home. He's smoking her cigarettes because she gave up on him. He's like, ah, that's all right for me. I'm a he's man. he's a guy. He's a guy. He's right. allowed to. It's nice tasting when man smokes a cigarette. I'm John Schneider. <laughs> but he gets home and he sees that there's a car wrecked into his house and his neighbors got the ambulances there and his neighbor's been injured. And he's like, good. Fuck that guy. He's not even white. And the EMT is like, well, actually, he was... um." trying to stop these kids from driving uh, their car up into your porch and destroying your your little flag painting. And he's like, oh, well, I guess fuck him less then, I guess. Right. It's it's literally, he does that boomer thing where a boomer realizes that actually someone was kind to them, but they can't fucking go, I was wrong. So he does that like, eh. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just the noise of a generation's legacy dying, just, eh. <laughs> Every dad refusing to open a Christmas present. <laughs> and his dog is dead. Fuck We're all having you. a good fucking time. The movie, movie. killed the fucking dog. Are God you kidding me? Damn it. I hope he kills those kids now. I was so. There, was, should, there should be a fucking dead clown right by. Those communist pieces of shit need to stand for the anthem and he should kill them. <laughs> I wrote, Back to Bloom. <laughs> I wrote in, in order, oh God, Heath is fucking furious. I'm okay with a nuke going off and killing every single person in this town. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, so, so he buries the dog. We have this long fucking scene where he's burying the dog. He, he says to the dog just before he buries it, he's like, give your mom a lick for me. And I'm like, that's the least interesting context that could that those words could come up in, actually, as it turns out. Oh, he's he's got a great line. He's like, I don't know if there are dogs in heaven, but if there aren't, I will burn in hell. And I was like, nope, that's not that's not how it goes. <laughs> so then he goes to the hardware store. He's got an idea. So he needs to get pipe and zip ties and a post hole digger. And I'm like, you're going to cut that kid's hands off, aren't you? <laughs> right. You'd think you would think that this would be the one time when this psychopath psychopathia would come in useful. But no, his solution is the most pathetic, half ass jingoistic bullshit in the universe. So yep. stupid. Also, just more generally. We should be making way more arrests. The FBI should be making so many arrests just at the hardware store by just waiting for somebody to, like this <laughs> yep. to go in. There. Just stand by the zip ties. Everybody who goes to the hardware store who needs like more than one thing, they're probably doing something like this. Okay. Like yep. if the FBI was on top of Home Depot, J6 never happens. Like okay. we're good. No, Thank that's fair. you. No, that's fair. Yeah. So the, the spike in zip tie sales probably should have tipped them up. So then, yeah. So we, but what he's, 
decided to do is put up a really, really, really big flag in his yard. They killed That's his, his dog. That's his solution to them killing his dog. Yeah. They killed his dog. They drove a car into your house. And this twisted fucking waste of humanity is like, I'll show them. I'll put up the biggest flag they ever done saw. <laughs> so, I hate him. I oh. hate him so much. So the neighbor comes over. He's like, hey, man, sorry about your house, which would trust us is damaged. We don't have to show you on the movie if we don't want to. We can just refer to how damaged it is. And so he puts him to work. He's like, here, dig this post hole. I'm going to go buy a gigantic American flag. Now, this is how much their stupid fucking movie falls apart, right? Because he goes to Camping World to buy the giant flag they have up front. But the whole idea of this movie is that everyone is so offended by American flags that they keep vandalizing his house for having one. Why aren't they vandalizing Camping World? Right, like, like this movie's stupid ass persecution fantasy cannot help but fall apart, even in its own fictional universe. Yes. Also, I feel like the people at Camping World are gonna panic and like turn gay and like Native American. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it turns gone now. <laughs> the minute he drove away with that flag, gay orgy, like gay orgy. Yeah, almost certainly. Yeah. <laughs> So the neighbor says, all right, hey, look, man, I'll tell you what, I'll help you raise the, the flagpole, but I'm not going to hang the flag with you because I still have issues what, with it genociding, you know, a, a thousand generations of, of my people. And he's like, well, fuck you. Yes. Go home. Instead of, think about where this is in the structure of the movie, right? He and the neighbor finally seeing eye to eye, working together, and the neighbor says, you know what? Because of the genocide, I just don't want to raise it up all the way. And this fucking idiot's answer is, Fuck you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I ain't changing for shit, motherfucker. Yeah. And as he walks away, the neighbor's like, hey, man, like, let me list like five different moments of genocide in your history. Do you know about any of these? And he's like, no, I don't. And that's the end of that's that scene. That's the end of the what? scene? Oh, that's the end of the conversation. He doesn't come back. I want to clarify. He doesn't come back later in the movie and be like, you know what? I looked up those no. things. They're bad. His answer is, I refuse to learn. Square -na 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 -na. Get off my property, <laughs> America. Yeah. I'm jerking off right now. It's so silly. <laughs> if everyone who downloads this movie got some kind of computer virus that could ice nine electrocute them to death, except for us <laughs> and the, the listeners of this podcast, the world would be a better place. Think about how much better the world would be if the government just drove around to all the houses of everyone who purchased this and shot them. <laughs> so if I was going to go, that would be like the most worthwhile reason for me I'd to be go. Willing, right? if, honestly, if they promised to do everyone else, I'd be like, line me up, bad boy. All right. All right. Well, that yeah, no, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And then we get closer to jerking off to the flag than this show has ever been before as he tries to <laughs> hoist this. He tries to literally do the Iwo Jima thing by himself while ASMR whispering about the greatness of America in rhyme. Oh, it's it, this is so very sexual. Again, of course, oh. throughout. Like, honestly, if he doesn't fuck this flag, like, I'm offended on behalf of the flag. Like, they don't <laughs> yeah, for sure. literally show us him fucking the flag in the movie. If, like, off frame, that doesn't happen, I'm mad. Like, that's just bad behavior. Yeah. And <laughs> my favorite part, though, is, yeah, like you said, he tries to do the Iwo Jima thing. And he's like, all right. I'm going to try this out by myself. Am I? I'm uh, like a bunch of Marines. I'm, I'm like I? a bunch of guys. I'm like 30 feet tall and or have super strength, <laughs> right? Can fly. Let me try. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Neither of those. I'm none of that. That's crazy. And he does, we watch him get to the tippy toes part where he's like, oh, nope. Okay. Okay. I can't do it. This doesn't, I, doesn't work anymore. No, I have to We're slowly. Here. You'd have to be so much taller or stronger or both. Fuck. Uh, and also like. We have to talk about the poem because this poem is a very famous patriotic poem. I wrote the name down of it and then I forgot it. But it's it's like, if you want to see America, go to California. It's pretty pretty there. And also check out New York. That's nice. Fucking Philadelphia. <laughs> And there's nothing about <laughs> shit, mud stick Louisiana. In yeah, that I, one, I wrote my it? notes. I feel like I could make this the writer of this poem 
really give up on himself with a long weekend in Detroit. God yes. knows it worked for yeah. me. <laughs> just Alexis de Tocqueville being like, yeah, and then there's like a swamp. I don't know. Fucking, <laughs> yeah, right. Remember, this, yeah, exactly. This is a weird part to include in my big thing, but I guess just in case. There you go, John. <laughs> So, yeah, so so he applies some gumption and a pulley, right, so he can get the flag up. While he's doing this, the wife, the neighbor's wife shows up and she's like, why are you so terrible and awful? And he's like, that's I just my whole generation. We just decided I just like 16 of us that are pretty awesome. But other than them, you know, it's just uh, we're just shit. We're just shit. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, he says compromise means both people lose. And she literally says, she's like, hey, you know, bad men die lonely, right? And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I sure <laughs> do. I, if anyone knows that, let me tell you. I sure oh my will. God. I, John Schneider, and having a moment of self-awareness it's right so now. It's so real for him. You watch John <laughs> Schneider, the man who wrote the line, bad men die lonely, that gets said to him. He hears it. And then he just like, he has to sing himself out of the frame. Yeah. He starts singing like the rest of Old Lang Syne that was in his head <laughs> yes. and he just dances off. Cuts. You watch him completely dissociate from his own emotion. You watch him feel them, right? You see like a flashback to Dukes of Hazzard and some girl being like, you're my favorite on the show. And then you see him snap into the present and see the crew with the fucking tiny Sony <laughs> Sam camera <laughs> that they're shooting his little flag jerk off movie to. And you see him be like, if I don't sing a song, right now I will die <laughs> and then the sad Old magician the loads quake. up his case <laughs> as tears flow down <laughs> fuck gonna die lonely <laughs> so we cut to the kids stealing cars again uh, we get a shot of shirtless John Schneider just as jiggly as you'd expect him to be at his age he's coming out of the shower so puts his shirt on and he falls down now this is we expect <laughs> going to be the moment of the reveal of the cancer yeah but no he just he's just super tired I guess he's just a piece of shit these movies are so stupid that like I generally was like oh this is his Christian movie cancer fall that's what that was right it's so he falls down like He's in an infomercial for a product called anti-gravity power. And it's just like, <laughs> All right. has this ever happened to you? There's got to yeah. be a better way. <laughs> so, yeah. So now, luckily for him, the love interest was looking in his window just when she lives there, just when he fell down. So she runs in to help him. Meanwhile, the kids are outside. They, they're, they're hot wiring his car, his El Camino, and they're going to use it to pull down his giant flagpole because they're at war with the American flag, damn it. You could literally just push it with one finger and it would fall yeah. down right now. Oh, yeah, really. To be clear. The kid who is hot wiring the car, they're like, are you sure you can steal it? He goes, yeah, my dad's an immigrant. <laughs> they, they, he, they, he says that. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wanted one of the kids to be like, and I can hide the stolen money because my dad's a Jew. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so Native Americans can't steal cars? Can't. It's actually no, physically impossible. That's immigrant. why John okay. Schneider doesn't immigrants <laughs> steal a car country. in the movie. But they can hear cars being stolen, which is what happens here, right? The neighbor wakes up and he's like. But they can't see them because it's like a boat. Right, right, yeah. He's like, wait, I've never seen his the... car get stolen before. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so that'd be invisible to him. No, but he wakes up and he's like, oh, I can sense that the finale of the movie is just over the corner here. So he, he goes to run out, grabs his gun, right? There's got to be a lot of firearms involved. He grabs his gun and he runs out to, to like save the flagpole. Meanwhile, the love interest is in John Schneider's house going like, hey, your doctor told me you're not dying or anything. You're just... um." Laying on the fucking floor now. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, fuck, that's true. Fine. Oh, right. I'll get yeah. up and have a gunfight with children now. Go. Yes. Like in a snip. And then he, he does, he grabs his gun and goes for literally a gunfight with children. Out he goes out with his gun with children. to murder teenagers. Yes. So now the kids have, have lassoed the flag and they're trying to pull it out. The neighbor runs out and starts shooting at the kids like my cousin Vinny heard an owl. <laughs> right? <laughs> he just immediately, he like heard that hot wiring, runs outside, blam, 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 everywhere. Starts Terrifying. shooting the car. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and to be clear, when I said gunfight with kids, the kids don't have guns. No. They're just standing. Shooting right. kids is the correct way to say that. Yeah. Yes. 
I feel like when we go, when we go to QED, sometimes the conversation about gun violence comes up. Like, and the Europeans are always like, I do not understand where do all your violence is so sad. You must not do it. I feel like we should show them this movie and be like, this is what most Americans think guns are. That's why yep. someone dies every 14 and a half seconds of a gun in this country is because this is what we think guns are. Yep. yep. So, yeah, so, but the kids do successfully pull his flag down. Quint rushes to its rescue because the, you know, the flag can't touch the ground like it's gonna drown yes. he grabs it like it's bleeding to death in a war movie yes he like yes. cradles it in in his arms for a and as though if he can keep it off the ground it will not bleed to death right because right flag code yeah yes yeah so he's holding it up again doing the little iwo jima thing himself the quarterback kid comes and pushes him down lest the flag be too respected and then steps on the flag Yes. And John says, get your foot off her. And to be fair, the QB is like, I'm sorry. I know I'm the villain in the movie. Did you say her? Do you anthropomorphize it to a lady specifically? You fucking the flag. Are you having heterosex with the flag? Yes. Yes, he is. I don't know. I don't know why I asked. I don't know why I asked. Okay. I can see the cum. So now, so he pulls out his gun and he's like, he's telling the kids they've got to put it up the uh, flag now or he'll kill them. The neighbors there, he says he's got a gun too. He's like, dude, you can't like make them. You can't kill children for knocking over your flag. Right. So Gr granted, I fired a gun at them moments ago like a <laughs> crazy person, but now I'm sort of on That was wildfire. This is a different thing. Yeah. You're yeah, just right. planning a murder. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but then John turns the gun on the neighbor and he's and the his wife runs out, the neighbor's wife runs out and says, like, hey, don't shoot my husband. To which he says, and I quote, Tell your squaw to get back in the teepee. Jesus. So this is the end. Of, this is the finale of the movie. This character has no arc whatsoever. None. He's just, he is apparently the exact right amount of racism from the beginning. It's a point on the spectrum. <laughs> he is a single dot. Yep, exactly. So this is where the quarterback kid goes for his gun and John Schneider shoots the tiny teenage kid in the arm. Right, but it's a movie written by John Schneider, so the kid's like, owie! Right, he I've is... learned a valuable but important <laughs> right. lesson. <laughs> right. Thank you for setting that healthy boundary for me. I did learn that I don't grab at guns. Yes. Gosh! Yes. That was as effective as it was safe for everybody involved. <laughs> <laughs> but now the cops show up. Right. The, the, he, he tells the other kids, he's like, raise my flag or I'll shoot you like I shot your friend. So they start to walk over there. The cops show up and they're like, hey, man, none of this. Just all of this is illegal. Everything you literally about murder. This. You literally just shot a child. They should shoot Quint right away. Is that yes. not like correct? Like, well, that, that's the conversation they have. A, a man has a gun out pointing at children who have no weapons and you arrive on the scene as a cop. And the kid and one of them is shot. Right. One of the kids is already shot. Yeah. And there's already a bleeding kid who was shot. You shoot that guy, right? And that's the conversation. The cops are standing there with their guns drawn going, I don't know. This one's tricky. Yes. Yeah. He's why. But then <laughs> the hero <laughs> of the movie, nay, the hero of fiction itself, <laughs> Wes's wife comes out of the house with a fully automatic machine gun. Like a M16. M16. Yes. She <laughs> floats out with like a Harrier jet and missiles yes. <laughs> and shoots John Schneider to death in the greatest thing that has ever happened or will ever happen in cinema. I, I thought I was hallucinating. Like, <laughs> I was like, this is not happening. I'm going to have to like call Noah and Eli to check about this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I went into a fugue an episode. state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. No, the best part, the, the greatest thing that's ever happened is that after he gets shot in the heart, he falls to his knees, but he won't let the flag touch the ground. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt came back to life just long enough to say, it's a little much, man. You can let the much. flag Yikes. hit the ground. It's actually very explicitly in the flag code that none <laughs> of this matters. All I wanted in this moment was for Mrs. Beaverton to like stab a metal pole through his chest and hoist a Cherokee Nation flag. Or shoot, just shoot him <laughs> again. 
<laughs> just <laughs> Cherokee Nation flag flying. If it had just been like, blam, 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 blackout credits, my favorite movie. Turns out <laughs> yes. it's my favorite movie. <laughs> Love and hate are that close together, everybody. Oh. We learned something today. So, so yeah, so he flashes back to Sepia Nam for a minute. Luckily, his neighbor catches the flag so he can fall down. The love interest is like, call an ambulance. He says, I don't need an ambulance. I need a a, a coroner. Can you do that? Can you reject an ambulance? I don't think you you get to make that call. If you are an EMT worker, please do that when John Schneider. Yeah, with John Schneider. I feel like he should be the exception on that. Yeah. If John Schneider gets a paper cut, he doesn't need an ambulance. He needs a coroner. Given our healthcare system, you should be allowed to be like, no, 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 thank you. Uber, please. Right, I'm getting yeah, an Uber. right, right. Yeah, exactly. But he's like, your wife is a pretty good shot for an Indian. And he goes, oh, racist right to the end. He's like, you bet your ass I am. I died for my flag. And he's like, no, you were holding no, a gun on me. You held a gun children, at me right, and, and shot children. children. And Nothing to do with the flag, actually. Is that nope. is, is explicitly? Also, there's a racial correction about the the aiming oh, here. Oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, good shot for an Indian. And the correction is, she's actually Irish. So just to be clear, last second, the movie was like, have we ranked races in terms of uh, anything recently? <laughs> what about in terms of marksmanship with a, I'm sorry, guys. an automatic weapon? This movie is absolutely perfect in every way. I don't need to tell you guys that, but no one is going to believe an engine could shoot. Okay. <laughs> We're going to need an explanation for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be the pedant. I'm sorry to be the pedant. <laughs> so then, so we get him in, in Nam heaven with all his war buddies and his dog. Um, his, his dead wife is there. Black. She's black. So he, you, so he was not racist. <laughs> yes. It's she so walks up odd. and she's like, hello, Quint. I'm black. Like, it might as well be like the line. It's so silly. He might as well be like black. Just how I remember you. Not That's racist. right, baby. That's right. Do you remember when I granted you use of the N word earlier? That's official. Do you remember? Oh, that? no. That's right. That's right. Oh, no. Quite so. literally my. <laughs> nope. Nope. Credits. Nope. So, well, then then we have to cut to his green screen funeral where an armed child cop leads everyone in the Pledge of Allegiance. Why is is there a child cop? You (laughs) have to explain the child. No, I need to move forward with my life. I'm a father. (laughs) I'm a husband. We can't just not talk about why there's... Eli, just so you know, in my will, if I die, for you to get anything from my will... Your child has to do this. There has to be the child child cop who leads everybody in there. Yes, exactly. It is a good... (laughs) And play taps on Bugle well, like pretty well, like medium well. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. But all the characters sure will miss him. And then we close with a very long flag porn montage in case anybody didn't finish up (laughs) during the main movie. Oh my God. I never, I always forget how funny the flag ballet is. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know every time they do it, they're doing it on a soldier's coffin so that you're not supposed to laugh at them. But then maybe they shouldn't fucking spin it on their fingers like a whole Harlem (laughs) Globetrotter. Maybe it shouldn't be a very sexual moment between two (laughs) Marines in dress uniforms while they fold sexually. It's like, it's like the tea ceremony with Danny and Kumiko in Karate Kid (laughs) 2. It's like that sexual. It is. Yeah. so much more. I had to do this stupid thing at my first job when I was a kid. It was so dumb. That sounds terrible. All right. So, and that's the end of the movie. I want to ask you guys, because this movie is clearly in the fucking pantheon. It's in there with God's Not Dead 3 and If Footman Tire You and Let There Be Light and Second Glance, like the greatest movies we've ever done. So where is it? Is it, is it top 10, top five? Like where in the pantheon is it in your mind? Top Ooh. three. Honestly, top three. Really? Yeah, it's man, it's right. I'm there. gonna say maybe top three also. Like the, I gotta put leap ahead because leap, okay. leap yes. is impossible yep. to beat yep. in my head. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's right up there. Yes, right up there for sure. Yeah. Oh, I see. I don't think I want to go higher than top ten because there's all of Donald James Parker. You know, that's oh make god, it so, yeah, yeah. I, oh, it's, yeah. It's definitely top ten though. Yeah. Okay. The the three Atlas Shrug movies are two, three of my favorites too. <laughs> so like maybe five, I'm gonna say I'll say top ten too. I'll, I'll still right, give all it right. top ten for sure. Cowards, top three. All right, well, well, that's gonna do it for our review of To Die For. It's not gonna do it for the episode just yet because we still need to find some way to follow this one up. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, as you know, I have been on a search 
in our 417 episodes for a documentary that has the worst idea. Mm -hmm. And I think I have a pretty good contender for next week. Really? It's a little picture called Crazy Wise, and the premise is this. What if mental illness is good, actually? Oh, no! All right, so... We'll be watching Crazy Wise. Oh, with that to, I guess, look forward it's to... good for writing skits and stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to bring episode 417 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to cut yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the Scathing ADS Citation, the DMD Minus, and the Skeptic Crowd available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slapping Dress on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for Give some to chunk of your life this week for Heath Enright and Eli Bosti Common Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Blue states like California continued to subsidize the very existence of red states like Louisiana. God awful movies tread all over your stupid little snake. John Schneider will be voting in the next election. Mm -hmm. Unless he dies of COVID. I mean, he, could, he could die of... Yeah, Which he could very die likely. Of the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights.